Hey over there, Joe Lunchbox. And Joy and Eddie And today we've landed right here in Galloway, Ohio. Now, we got a real special treat for you today. Uh, as you know, we come from a sideshow background. One of the acts we do there is I use little animal traps that are meant to trap, obviously. Mm -hmm. Cute little bunnies, coyotes, all those type things. And I put my body parts in those traps. I know, it's pretty crazy, right? Well, good enough subject. Well, today, we're right here to go to the Trap History Museum. It's a gentleman named Tom Parr. He collects all different traps, trap memorabilia, and everything along the way. And he has his own museum here. Um, it's open to the public on a reservation basis. You can't just show up. We'll put the link down below. If you want to contact Tom, come see his museum after you're done. You could do that. It's in, I heard it's one of the biggest collections. It might be the biggest collection, I don't know. But we're about to head in to check it out. Now, we're gonna give you a little treat. If you stay tuned to the very end, at the very end, we are going to put the pinkest, most sensitive part of my body into an animal tree. That's a little treat for you. And if you like seeing weird stuff like this, well not the museum, this is cool stuff. If you like seeing cool stuff like this, let me say, you should like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, you know, comments down below, all, all the good stuff. But I think it's time that we do this. Yes. All right, Trap History Museum, it's, here we go. Step right up, let's go for this ride. is made out of wood. Oh my god, I made it. And so, it's different. Was it made for his personal or was it like a store display? Just a display. display. We, yeah. we used to take it to shows just to attract, but it, it got, a windstorm came and broke it. Oh so no. So I sent it back to him and he repaired it and then I just hung it up there and yeah. it stays now. These are all different color phases of a coyote. I mean, they go from black to red, to, then a gray fox, and a red fox, mm -hmm. and a raccoon, and an otter, and a bunch of mink. There's an animal that looks like it weighs 500 pounds, but it's really only 20. Oh, no. <laughs> the guy did a very nice job of Wow. That's that. insane. That is crazy. Yeah, you have to pick it up and... <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Actually, the state of New York really was one of the beginning of, of the animal traps in, as we, you know, in mass production. Mm -hmm. And it was a company called Oneida Com Community in Oneida, New York. Yeah. And in the eight, they started in 1848. There's a lot of books written on Oneida Community. Oh, and know. these are all things from Oneida Community. There was a religious group. Mm -hmm. There was 150 of them to begin with and they made some of the best steel traps in the world. They needed a, something to keep the community alive, and so that's one, uh, one of their members, Sewell Newhouse, was a blacksmith, and so he started making traps. But the other things they did is they made, uh, bu you know, they canned fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. and they made thread, and, but today, you know, I'm the yeah. silverware, yeah. same company. That's crazy. So, but, um, so this room over here is what I call the new house room. You know, their traps, they built, the largest was a number six for grizzly bear. Then they made smaller ones for um, black bear and wolf traps and coyote and so mm -hmm. on. And so they had quite a collection of, I mean, they made, and believe it or not, all the traps in here, even though a lot of them look the same, to a collector, there's something different, different about them, mm -hmm. and so that's the way collecting is. But you know, there are three different brands of traps that was made by Oneida Community, and in the center, I have a group of traps that is owned by the State Museum of Pennsylvania, and they're all part of this man's collection. It's called the Steel Trap in North America, and it's Richard Gerstel, and these traps were all part of his collection, and that's what these are in the showcases, the ones around the perimeters all mine. If I've been collecting for 36 years, so it's um, a 
lifetime collection, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. These are all government traps. Uh, okay. They have, you know, a marking on them, and I put mm -hmm. tags on them. But, yeah. but so Oneida Community sold steel traps until 1925, and then they sold the steel trap division and went back to making silverware. They sold it to a company in Lidditz, Pennsylvania called Animal Trap Company of America. And besides the steel traps, Animal Trap Company made lunch pails, they made garden tools, they made slingshots, they uh -huh. made plastic, they made a lot of other yeah, things. Uh -huh. And in 1966, people of the community of Lidditz said, you know what, we don't like the name Animal Trap in our community, <laughs> let's change it. And so they had a contest and they came up with the name Woodstream and that's what it's called today. And today, they don't make steel traps any longer, but they make a live, like, have a heart traps. Okay. And they okay. make mouse and rat traps, and that's all they make now. Okay. Took one trap. That was probably the most popular of all the sizes. It's the number one that every, all the kids use for trapping muskrats mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. And so we started the earliest one in 18, probably 86, all the way up to the current one. And so... The, <laughs> And then my office is just, I do uh, three magazines. Um, I do one called Traps, which is for trap collectors. Mm -hmm. And then I own a magazine called Trapper's World, which a young lady from Maryland actually is the editor. And then Fur Fish Game is a magazine that's been out for many years. It's here in Columbus. Mm -hmm. And every month I do an article for them on antique traps, so Very I've cool. been doing it since night, or 2007, so it was a big thing back in the yeah. day, in the 20s and 30s, every kid trapped, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, today is different, and there's, I call that my Picasso, it's 43 count oh, wow. <laughs> but you know, back in the 20s, 1920s and before, a person could make more money catching a skunk than they could a week's wages in a factory. And the reason being, before in those days, they called that American sable. And mm -hmm. it was a very good fur. I mean, it's, the fur is very good quality, but the one that brought $4.50 was an all-black one with a white spot on his head. That was the best one. So then the FDA said, you know what? You gotta call a skunk a skunk. You can't call it an American sable. <laughs> And then, uh, of course, the fur trade all began with the old beaver hat, you yeah. know? And this is one of those, and it's just a cardboard frame. And what they did to make the beaver hat is they would take the beaver pelt and they would pluck all of the guard hairs to where it was just down to the felt. Oh. They would rake that off, mix it with chemicals, mercury being one of them, and inject it onto that hat. Well, that's where the Mad Hatter's disease came from. Things that most people don't know is our government from 1933 to 1936 required that every store place a logo such as this in their window. It looks like National Rifle, mm -hmm. but that's National Recovery Administration. And for two years, everybody had, they requested them and if you didn't, um, you would be, you were supposed to be boycotted mm -hmm. the company. And so like, here's some trapping ones. See the logo? Mm -hmm. There it is, there it is. And even on non-trap, of course I'm trapping, so that's what, but there's a hunter trader trapper, thir 19, 33 to 36, there's a, and even, um, Here's a Saturday Evening Post, and right there. Oh, yeah. So that was a requirement. Mm -hmm. And the other one that's kind of interesting is the old Swatchiko. Mm -hmm. Everybody said, oh, my, and there's some traps with it. And, yeah. said, and the first thing they say, oh, you got some Nazi traps. I said, no, mm -hmm. that would consider good luck. And yeah. it's four L's, and it's luck, life, live, and love. This is an old padlock for a barn. Mm -hmm. There it is. Oh. There was a guy by the name of Ernest Thompson Seaton, and he didn't get all the credit he deserved. This is 1890s, uh, early 1900s, but he actually started the Boy Scouts, but he never really got the credit that... William uh, Powell. Yeah, yeah, Powell. 
But he was, and then once uh, that all happened, he changed and he developed uh, Birch Bark Row, which is Woodcraft League. And But anytime you can find a book with his signature yeah. and his logo is a wolf print, um, those are quite collectible. But, and these, he, he was a, you know, this was a Boy Scout book that is, that's Indian Sign Language for Boy Scouts. And there's, of course, one of the first ones. Yeah. And he wrote all of these books. And the one that's probably the most famous is this one called Wild Animals I Have Known. Uh, early on, he used to be a big trapper. And then he changed to being an animal lover. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, by this time, called him a nature faker <laughs> because he, you know, he made these animals like real people. Mm -hmm. But again, when you can find with his signature, yeah, uh, they're quite, quite collectible. Yeah. This uh, room here is what I call the European room, at least part of it. That, mm -hmm. and that's traps from Europe, Australia. And they don't really have too many trapping rights, and I guess you could see why they're kind of big, bulky, gruesome traps. And um, but that's a dingo from Australia, as is this one, and then that's a fox from Australia, and that's called a fur seal. And then this stuff is just a variety of I like little jeweler anvils, and, and those are all called drags, and. Out west, they would hook that to the end of the chain of the trap. The animal would get caught, and he would drag it away from the site where it was at, and both for so he could hide, and also so back in the day when furs were worth a lot of money, they would have the theft thing, and so this yeah. took them away from people seeing them. Yeah. So. All the big traps and any trap with teeth is not legal to use today, and so that kind of stuff is. No longer mm -hmm. used, of course. In here, I thought, well, I'm going to get me one of these toothpick holders. Then I find, oh my gosh, everybody <laughs> made them. <you> know? <laughs> was um, a guy, two brothers in, in, or in Illinois had raised ducks to sell the meat, and then they started you, mounting them, so to speak, and they have a bottom, a wooden bottom, and they float. And so it's they would close this up and you could take it to the marsh and have your uh -huh. duck decoys. So duck decoys, I had yeah. a real duck. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And then these yeah. are all soapstone. Stone. Yeah. And they're kind of neat. I find them when I go in. They you can see that. I go antiquing a lot. Yeah. Of them. There's a lady that at an antique oh, store. That is cool. And what she does is she'll fold every page and when she's all done, does that look like a wolf print or a dog print? Yeah. yeah. And I put the wolf cover on it. <laughs> and then this one has like two boys yeah. two yeah and it's funny uh they would never this antique store called heart of ohio and ohio here um they would never tell me who she was other than oh some old lady that does these <laughs> so i seen her at another show and i said they said you're an old lady and she said i don't think so <laughs> so i said how about let me take your picture and put it with my <laughs> <Good luck, laughs> kind of funny then Gene Autry, and the only reason that I have a collection of his stuff is on one of the comic books. He, he was holding a trap. Yeah. trap. And the trap company in 1946 was pretty large. There was a lot of people, uh, yeah. a lot of yeah. ladies that worked there, and, and it was a big factory. They turned out a lot of traps and trapping memorabilia. And, and then these are all just lures um, that you sent. Sent, yeah. Um, Mounts a wolf from Alaska. And, Oh, a coyote, a beaver, a cinnamon raccoon, and a possum, and <laughs> just a whole variety of mm -hmm. animals there. That there's a, this is a black bear coat and gloves. Is that another? Is that an albino or another cinnamon raccoon? That's kind of an albino. I it's another guy. He said it was an albino, but it looks a lot like the yeah. cinnamon. Yeah, they just put red eyes. Yeah, I it. think so. <laughs> I don't know. That room over there is. Um, that's what I call the modern room, even though there's a lot of the traps that are in there is no longer being made. <laughs> about six companies that make traps. Back in the 20s, there was a, a, over a hundred companies that made steel traps. I've never seen those before. Those are called Eclipse, and those were made in the 30s. Just uh, And the principle behind them is you could 
fold them down and put them in your pack a lot easier. Uh -huh. But they didn't really turn out too well. Just <laughs> this group is this is the mouse and rat traps, and uh, modern marbles have been here. Um, a show that was called Sunday Morning with Charles Osgood. Mm -hmm. They was here once on just a mouse trap. I don't know. Just everybody tried to build a better, better mouse trap. Yeah. And that's uh, these are mostly from Europe, and then these are American. It's really hard to beat. These are the rat size and these are the mouse size. I have a, a friend that was here two months ago from Norway and he was doing a book on mouse traps and I can't read a doggone thing of it. It's all in Norwegian. <laughs> but when he was here he took a picture of the museum and he took a picture of this room with me, so I'm in a Norwegian book. <laughs> and what it amounts to is when the mouse gets caught, this ball will roll down, the match strikes, and lights a candle. <laughs> and then this one's called the mouse mobile. And so the mouse would get caught, and then he goes back into this chamber, and he can roll around the house. <laughs> this. They tried everything with mouse traps. Okay, uh -huh. this one is an exploding outhouse. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and it usually will catch it. That's pretty neat, huh? That is oh, cool. that is cool. <laughs> oh. The Victor. Yeah. I love the varieties of them over the years. Oh, yeah, yeah there is so many different like Joy. ones. You see Mickey Mouse? He's yeah, in. Mickey Mouse. Um, there's there's one Bigfoot, <laughs> that red one. Uh huh. That was Bing Crosby's. There he is. Um, and then there's, of course, poisons and oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were some neat names on some of them. Knock 'em stiff. <laughs> Cannonball, easy set. Tomcat, one that uh, has a slapper to keep dogs from. <laughs> from know, getting when they yeah. get the bait the, the thing comes over and smacks them and they quit I guess I don't know <laughs> it's cute I love this little house here with his little wheel once he gets caught in that yeah. one yeah I'm not <laughs> sure yeah that one uh, he wants to keep it as a pet yeah and here is uh, this one is called the uh, you know they get caught and then they they can exercise, exercise while they or whatever. <laughs> a bunch of poisons. Poisons, yeah. I love the well, look of some of those with the, like oh, the old the spray old ones bottles. with the glass jars. Oh, yeah, See the yeah, green glass and the, the glass jars are crazy on They're some, uh, beautiful with the glass jars. I love in the back in the case you had a wolfing license. Oh yeah. Let me I gotta show you. Those are really was great. Yeah, it's nothing to do with trapping. <laughs> During the war at the POs or the, you know, they would actually, uh, if you was a guy, you know, you, I mean, they had male and female, and what it did is it allowed you to whistle at the yeah. opposite sex. How about that? And then I've got something else here that, here is a chastity belt. <laughs> These were used during World War One. And the guy would take the key. Can you imagine putting your lady in one of those? <laughs> Polish didn't want to have anything over on them, so they came up with their own chastity belt. You ready for this one? Ta da! It's a mouse trap! <laughs> <laughs> they even made a lot of miniature traps, and there's different ones that, like this, these little guys. And then there's even smaller ones like that. Oh. What are these coyote getters? Those were made for out west. They're illegal to use today. What they did was they would take and they would wrap that end and put lure on it. This would be in the ground. The only thing exposed is this. Mm -hmm. and the coyote would walk up and pull on that. And when he pulled on it, it would shoot a bullet full of strychnine and it would kill him. Kill. Yeah. That's it. My old, where I used to get all my old Boy Scout stuff. Yeah. That's what sat in front of the store. <laughs> Motor would go and they would go back. Yeah, yeah, that one, I don't have it plugged in, but yeah. Yeah, it's it still, would open yeah. And yeah oh, that's we used awesome. That's our store here. <laughs> Probably one of my favorite pieces, even all the traps I got, is an LL Bean sled. 
pretty neat. Wow. Yeah. And it just opens up. up? And Locks it. Closes yeah, up. a little toboggan. Yeah, quite a little, it's all hidden now, but a lot of Boy Scout stuff. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's... That's awesome. And then there's, over here is a really neat wow, picture of Boy Scout, but this is all the merit badges. <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> yeah, the teddy bear, interesting story about that one. Mm -hmm. It's interesting with this one, it's got a little two minute thing. Hi, I'm Teddy's Teddy. <laughs> Would you like to know how we got the name Teddy Bear? Well, I'll tell you. The year was 1902, and America's beloved president, Theodore Roosevelt, was on a hunting trip. President Roosevelt was renowned for his hunting skills, but on this particular day, there was no luck to be had. The president's hunting party, fearing his disappointment, captured a little bear cub and tied it to a tree. The president was then called upon to shoot the bear. But with the heart of a true hunter, President Roosevelt refused and ordered the bear set free. Clifford Berryman, a cartoonist for the Washington Post, captured the moment with a wonderful illustration titled, Drawing the Line in Mississippi. Seeing the cartoon, a New York store owner Morris Mitchum and his wife decided to make bears to sell in their shop. Morris wrote a letter to President Roosevelt asking permission to name his new bear Teddy. The president gave his consent. Him and his family ended up bringing it here on a flatbed and they've been ever since. So wow. It weighs 4,000 pounds. It would not set because the, the metal is all hollow. Watch that thing. It's exposed. So much wind branches are breaking on. Oh. So I'm going to be real thick light signs and stuff on two degrees and fire trucks. And um, we rebuilt this old log cabin. It was a two-story house. Oh. And uh, got an old outhouse. <laughs> and I got a sign in there that's kind of different. No dumping allowed. <laughs> <laughs> A lady paint, this is the same size as a pan on that trap, and it would go on there, but I never know when kids are going to be running back there and uh -huh. jumping on it, so so now I got the birds <laughs> yes. on it. But it uh, and those are all beaver tails? Yes. <laughs> so forge, and there's a big bellows that they used on forges, and wow. this big anvil's broken in the back. <laughs> mm -hmm. This was a fur press where they in the early days, they would take the beaver hides and and pack them in there and, and have ropes. And then they would oh, crank, crank down. this down and compress them and then tie them up and ship them out. Live beaver trap and boards that we use to put the coyotes and the beaver, and, well, not, well, the beavers is a big round board. Mm -hmm. Everything is put up what they call cased, which is like this. This is a coyote that's been tanned but it's you know and it would start out on the fur side or the pelt side out to dry uh -huh. it and then the fur buyer wants to see the fur so that's the way it, but this is one that's been tanned uh, that but they're called cased and then uh, but the beaver is put up on a hoop or on a board to open. stretch it out yeah it's just oval shaped and you tack it on the board so that was pretty amazing. One, his collection is amazing. Two, knowledge. Yeah. Three, anyone that lets people into his, I call it like his man cave, his private mm -hmm. museum, makes me so happy. Four, he gave me traps. Like I was not expecting to get stuff from the trap museum. I was expecting to look at them. That I walked and away. Learn. Yeah, and learn. <laughs> that I walked away with Mickey Mouse traps and a trap that was used as a demo to stick your hand in. That is so cool. Yep. This was amazing. Tom was incredible. This has to be one of my favorite like private museums I've ever been to. Yes. I love this so much. Now, I think we could call it, right, Joy? Wait. What? But you said at the beginning this is a prize. Oh, you're going to keep me to that? 
Well. All right, all right. Do we do we have a mouse trap with us? Let me let me check. Uh, we do. <laughs> you get to hold this now. Let's set this. Now, I promised you before, I'm gonna put the pinkest, most sensitive part of my body into this, which is my tongue. <laughs> what did you think I was talking about? Ooh. All right. Here goes nothing. Oh, snap. Okay, I think we can call it now. Now we can call it. Trap History Museum. Been Is there, done that? that. Remember folks, safe travels. Good eats. And live life. I really hurt. Well, yeah, it's a trap. I know. <laughs> Super awesome. He said we can grab a pear. For the road. We went apple picking a few ago. Now we go pear picking. I think you said these were Bartlett's. Let's not go for that one. Yeah. <laughs> that looks like a good solid pair right there. Cool. And then there's two right over in front of you. See if those might be okay. I hear some. Ooh. <laughs> that one was right. Alright, two pairs. 